So hey, YouTube family, guess who I have out with us again today? It's me! It's Elizabeth. I haven't been out here for what? Months. Last months. I think months. At the time that we were out before, we always catch fish when she comes out anyway. What did we got? What did we get? I forgot what we got. What in that day? Or? Oh, I know. Shark day. When I had all the sharks. Remember? Oh my gosh. Yeah, you nailed yeah. sharks that day. Oof. I thought we also caught something else good though to eat. Yeah, you did, mutton. Ah, okay, all right, cool. You guys have to look at the video and see. Yeah. What. Anyway, good luck charm with us today. So here's the plan for today, because it's been, as you guys know, it's been crazy windy. Nobody's been putting out too many videos, except the guys who have $350,000 boats and $7,000 drones and you know, $4,200 reels. But for regular people like you and us, we you know, really have a difficult time getting out when the winds are blowing at 20 miles an hour. Still a little rough. Yeah. But you know, we're out. So we're um what's the target for today? Trolling for Mahi. Yeah, we haven't we haven't hit actually, yeah, we haven't hit Mahi yet. I did one time so far this year, but that's it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Mahi would be the would be our target fish today. Yeah. Really I'll take tuna, mahi. but I think I'd rather have Mahi. Yeah, okay. Pretty awesome. Nice fish sandwich, yeah, Mahi yeah. tacos or something. That's the way to go. So here's what we're gonna do. Well, I don't think we're gonna do any Ballyhoo. I don't have time to go catch Ballyhoo today, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this pen reel. And that pen reel. We're gonna use these two pens and these two feathers. And look, they're identical. Yeah, and this is what we're gonna use. You all know it's the purple feather, and they love this thing. Yeah, tuna love it. Uh, mahi love it. So we're gonna run Everything two of them. But one of them will run way back because the tuna will typically hit uh, only a feather that's run way back behind the boat. Uh, and a mahi will hit it also behind the boat, of course. And then we'll run one pretty close for two reasons. Number one, so we don't tangle. And then number two. Because my hero come right up almost almost to the boat and smash one. So one will be close, one will be way back, mm -hmm. and we'll see if there's fish out there, we'll get them. I mean, if there's fish, they'll hit this. So that's the plan. Yeah, yeah. It's a little rough still, so we're not going to go really far, far out. No, I no. We got to our first spot here, and we're in 220 feet of water, so. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, if the bait's in close, then we don't have to go out far. If, the, if, the, if we don't see any bait, then it's too rough then we just won't be able to get out. That's all. I don't know if you can see behind us, but we got like probably three footers. Yeah. The key, I think, is just find the birds. Find the birds, find some weed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're right. That's it. But if we do that, then we'll, uh, we'll catch fish. Yeah. So, glad you're aboard today. Yeah. And uh, you know the deal. Follow us. Follow us. Woohoo! Fish on. Man, I'm happy. As a dolphin. Get him, baby, get him. How you doing on that thing there? Good. Okay, I just want to make sure the drag wasn't too. He come right out of the water, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Here's the deal. Yeah? I never, I never like to be filmed without my shorts on. Uh-huh. The second I take my shorts off, we get nailed. Well, that's because the fish, they got taste. That's what that bird was doing, babe. That's yeah. why. That one lonely bird, there they are. I like where he came right out of the water. Yeah. Before you throw them on real quick. I mean, you can, you can. You just, know. just keeping them tight. You don't have to stop reeling. Don't let them get loose, Dan. Okay. Keep it tight, keep it tight. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> oh, look at all the Oh, man, look at crazy. the bait flying. Ooh, ooh, that's a beauty, babe. Woo, come on, buddy. He's a good one. Talking gaffer here. I don't know about that. I right, just 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 get him in. He's a pretty good sized fish. <laughs> it's a little rough out here. Yeah, here he comes. Damn it's rough. Here comes our boy. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Good sized fish, babe. Woohoo! Oh, yes. Watch out, yeah, watch out for him. Woo, <laughs> uh, We needed to gap him. <laughs> so beautiful, he's so majestic. He is, he is, he's beautiful. Got him right in the corner of the mouth. You weren't gonna lose him. Okay. Hold him tight, but he's gonna buck. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> All right, let's get back out there and get us another one. Yeah! 
Yeah. Nice one. Hoo -ah. <laughs> awesome job, baby. Thanks, babe. Cool. Oh, look at how beautiful these fins are. They're blue and gorgeous. They are beautiful. 222 feet of water. Elizabeth scores! I'm telling you, a little purple feather. When you see the bait in close, it was right, the bait is right off the reef. There's no reason to go out 10, 15, 20, 30 miles. When you see that bait like that, then you know that the, that the fish have either pushed the bait in or the bait is in because of the weather or the wind. It's been windy for weeks. We're in pretty tight. Like I said, I could see, I could see the reef from here. I mean, it's like, it's right there. And we're in 222 feet of water. Are you a little happy? I'm a lot happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. We always catch fish when you come out. Always. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. All right. We got to get back out. We got to get back out there. There's another one. Fish on, fish on. Another dolphin? Another yep, yep, dolphin. Good. Oh, yeah. Nice. I got this one coming in. Boy, he's breaking the water, man. He looks as big or bigger than the other one. Nice fish. All right, I'm going to cut the engine so he's all yours. Okay. And you are the you are the Mahi Slayer today. Yeah, today, man. <laughs> you you oh, still no. got him? I don't know. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah, you got him. You got him. You got him. I see color. Heavy, yep. Yeah, he might be. Yeah, he might be a flipper. Let's see. If you move back when, when he gets close, no, the other way. Yeah, that's it. I'll see if I can flip him in. Yep. Yeah, he's a flipper. Woo! Coming in. Coming in hot. He's a 20 incher. Nice. All right, buddy. Look at you. <laughs> back in action, baby. <laughs> you are the Mahi Slayer. Trying to avoid the uh, hook in the old hand. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy, dude. Take it easy. Well, oh, all right. That made it easy. Un unhook himself. Just double check him. At the fork. He is 21 inches. 20, 21, 21 at the fork. Woo! Keeper. Great job. Mahi sandwiches. Again, nice one. We're on the spot. The, the other one was a lot bigger. You were right. Oh yeah, the other one's a lot bigger. Nice. It seems to be the magic number. 222 feet of water. This is the short one. This is the short one, man. This is the one right behind the boat. Yes, this is not. I don't. I don't know. If it's a mahi, he hasn't. He hasn't come up. Oh man. Where's that drag going? Yep. No mahi coming up though. Could this be a tuna in close like this? Getting it, getting it, working it, baby, working tight, it. Tight, tight, tight. Okay, you got it, you got it. This has got to be, I'm, I got color, man. I got deep color. All right, engine off when you get a chance. And it is a mahi. No way. He just hasn't come up. It's a good one. Yep. And I, it feels Ooh, weird. Yeah, it feels yeah. weird, though, man. He's got it tangled. There's, there's something wrong. Something is not right. What can I do to help? What can I do? Uh, maybe get the net. I got him close, but here he is, here he is, here he is. Hold it. Oh, baby. Hold it. Shit. I don't want to lose him. I feel like I'm going to lose him. Oh, he's like snagged. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. There's something going on with him. Oh, my goodness. He's not right. Got him. Go. You got him. Go. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. High five, babe. Yeah. <laughs> it is Mahi Day. Nice. He never came. Yeah, that's See, yeah, it's nice. in the um, it's it's like in his gill. Yeah, man, look at the blood everywhere. Holy oh, crap! Macro. All right, all right, dude. All right. Oh yeah, he's twenty-one. Twenty-one, right? Uh, actually, he is twenty-two. Twenty-two. Beautiful. Good job. All man. right, cool. Woo, man, look at the blood everywhere. Damn, baby. Nice. Good job. All right. Twenty-two. First, first one for Dan today. First one. Yeah, boy. Yeehaw. All right, good deal. Into the park. What a great start to the summer. This one, fishing maniac. You are the Mahi Slayer. Well, it was a good day. It was a good day, man. Then the water laid down finally. Yeah. But it's getting time. We need to get back. We need to clean some fish. We need to go neighbor's house and uh, cook up some fish and yeah. uh, do a little weekend party. 
party in the Keys. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, happy summer to everybody. Yes. And you know the deal. Follow us. us. All right, so now it's time to make some mahi tacos. So I want to show you something really quick. First, I'm going to make my very special chipotle sauce. Um, this is one of my favorites. We've had it on fish tacos. Uh, you can use it with shrimp tacos, but it's super easy, and I'm going to show you really fast. And I'm going to show you some hacks. So first things first, if you have fresh garlic, use fresh garlic. That's great. But... We have this organic garlic that's already minced up. Um, it's really consistent. It's from Spice World. We really like it. And because I'm going to hurry scurry, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to use about this much. You know, anytime that a recipe calls for garlic, we always say that whatever they say is the serving size is just a suggestion because we really love garlic. So I'm going to smash this garlic down and I'm trying to actually just make like a garlic paste. So real quick and easy like that. Give it a couple of goes and then we're going to scrape it off and put it straight in our little bowl. The next ingredient um, is chipotles in adobo. This is amazing. If you've never had it, you can find these pretty much anywhere and we really like this brand because it's consistent and the adobo sauce is really good. A chipotle is literally just a smoked jalapeno. We didn't know that. So we're going to take a couple of these chipotles out and oh yeah look at that. We are going to cut them open and remove some of the seeds. We really like hot stuff but uh, all of these seeds would make it way too hot. So, okay so once you have some of the seeds out and leave some of the seeds in now we're just going to chop this up really finely. It's smoky. Yeah okay. All right, and there we have it. So I'm going to take those two chipotles and we're going to add them into the bowl. And then we're going to add some mayonnaise. Uh, Captain Dan's favorite is Hellman's. We're going to use that. And it's literally just as much as you think you'll eat. There's only one mayonnaise. Oh, my. All the other ones are just imitations. So we're going to swirl it up like this. See how there's like some chunks in there? We like them. If you don't want them, you could run this through a food processor if you want and just get all those out. It's not quite enough, so we're gonna add some more. Mm -hmm. Add some of this adobo sauce. Ah, oh, that's the goodness right there. And if you find that it's not hot enough, just add some more adobo in. Yum. Yeah. And then, to really liven it up, we're going to add just a couple of drops of lime. And that's it. We're going to pop a lid on this and put it in the refrigerator until the fish is done. Okay, so up next is the fish. Captain Dan already uh, sectioned it off because we knew we were going to make tacos. He did a great job. So all I did was dry them off. For the seasoning, it's going to be really simple. So we've got, of course, salt and pepper. We like the Himalayan salt. Uh, garlic powder and then fresh jacks. You can get it on Amazon. I'll put a link down um, in the description box, but this is legit. Um, it's all organic seasoning and it doesn't have uh, added salt in it, so that's why we really like it. But this one is called pepper habanero and it is hot. So we're going to only use a tiny bit of this because that adobo is butt kicking anyway. So I'm going to season these up really quick and then we'll go cook them. All right, what you may have realized is I was pretty heavy handed on the seasoning of that fish and that's because I only did one side. So you could flip it over and go lightly season both sides, but I'm just going to do one side so that we can cook it quickly and get it back on the plate. Okay, so we're out here at the grill. We always cook our fish outside. I've got the side burner on and we're going to use some avocado oil. We're not frying it, so you don't need a whole lot. Um, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan a little bit. We're gonna let that heat up for just a sec and then work with the fish in. Okay. I'm gonna put it in season side down. When I flip the fish over, the oil will be just a little bit seasoned. And this is gonna cook up really fast. That's 
smells great. I try to put the uh, thicker pieces in first and then the smaller pieces in last, just knowing that it'll take longer for the thicker pieces to cook. Here's the key. Put the fish in and do not touch it. Everybody wants to move it all around. The real trick, if there is a trick, is to just put it in there and leave it be until it's time to flip it. If you keep pushing it around, touching it, it's gonna fall apart. Okay, see how the sides are getting white here? Time to flip a roof. Look at that. Okay. Okay, it's done. It's only been maybe three minutes total uh, because of the cuts and it, we're ready to roll. You know what the best part about this is? Huh. When people come down here and visit, yeah. You know, and then they're staying at, you know, at, one of, at, at a rental or wherever they are. They can do this so oh, simply in the backyard. It like, is so easy to do this. Right? It took like 10 seconds. Yeah, come back from a day of fishing. Yeah. And, uh, and then you can do this in the backyard. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's perfect. And it yep. smells amazing. It's going to be so good. Okay, so I am just using a piece of butter lettuce for my wrap. Uh, I've got the mahi, the cilantro, of course the adobo sauce, a piece of avocado, and the world's easiest cabbage. The mahi is amazing, the cabbage gives it the crunch, um, and the adobo sauce is amazing. Now that's the way you make a taco. So mine's a little different. I fixed mine up with a tortilla and a little bit of paste picante sauce because I like the idea of having like tomatoes on there as well. So other than that, it's identical. So I'm gonna wrap this thing up and take a bite. Mm. Okay. I think that there is nothing better than mahi the, they just it just it just goes that and maybe shrimp tacos do a sauce that you made the adobo sauce is amazing that's this makes the whole meal you know you know elizabeth and i were just talking as we were as we we're finishing up here and, and i'm making my last taco here and i was thinking how many people come down here they fish all day they catch fish especially if they bring their kids down it's like why would you go to a restaurant Spend, I don't know how much, 100, 100, I don't even know how much you would spend in one of the restaurants to do this exact same thing. You can make your own, you, you look at all the stuff that we put out, and then you make like your own. I mean, kids can make their own with their, you know, with their tomatoes and whatever, and the adults can have a glass of wine, and you're not spending like a ton of money, and you're, and you're eating your own catch, which is like the most fun thing to do when you come down. It's like, you go fishing, and then you eat your own catch, and this is just such a fun thing to do. Yeah, it's like if you... If you are staying in a hotel, then it's wonderful. You, there's restaurants, you take your fresh catch to, they do it up for you. But if you're staying at a VRBO or... Uh, RV park or... Yeah, or Airbnb, Airbnb and yeah. you've got access to a kitchen. It doesn't matter where you are. If you have access to a kitchen, right. gosh, this is so much better. It's, it's, it's more fun, first of all. And, and, and you're, you're eating your own catch. And you're not paying somebody else to cook your catch. And this is, this is nothing, nothing to cook. I mean, you don't have to be a cook to do this. This was, this was great. And I'm, I'm I won't, I won't take one. that personal. <laughs> I won't take that personal or anything. It's fine. <laughs> well, you are a professional cook, but I'm just yeah. saying you don't have to be a professional cook to make fish tacos. And here's the other thing. We were saying, Mahi, this is delicious and it's great with Mahi, but you can do this with snapper, you can do this with grouper, you can do this with any fish that you're catching offshore. And when you come back in after a day, what better thing to do than to clean your own fish and then, and then eat your own fish? I mean, it's perfect. So, yeah, it's amazing. Anyway. <laughs> All right, you know what to do. <laughs> Follow us. <laughs>
forget that. Don't use your grandmother's towel to wipe it up. Another thing, smile and